This is part two of my two-part video series on building my Galaxy Tab command center slash dashboard that is displayed on my desk. We're gonna finish up columns two and columns three today, which rounds out the completion of the entire dashboard. So get situated, grab yourself a beverage, uh, and get ready for the video, and let's get into it. All right, so this is how we left the video last time. We built a single column out of our three column Office tablet dashboard. So today we're gonna to add the second and hopefully the third column if we can do it quick enough so the video doesn't get super long. So as always, we go ahead and we start by editing the dashboard. So let me get out of the way here. Click the edit dashboard up here. And then there's an add card button down here. Now we're not adding another card to this grid. We're adding a whole brand new grid, which will then make the center column. So this will be a grid card. We'll add that grid card. And on that grid card, we are going to have one column like we did last time and not be square. And this one's gonna be, we're not gonna start with a grid on this particular center column because if you remember, I have the home feed card as my first item in that list. So I only have one uh, card in that very first top section of the grid. So we'll search for home feed card and we have a custom home feed card. Now, again, this card is, is a, an HACS edition. You'll need to go to HACS and add the home feed card. And what I'm gonna do, is, as I have in the past, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the configuration and then we'll talk through it. Okay, so I've pasted it in here and let's talk through what it is. First of all, this is what it looks like, but it's the custom home feed card. And this is where you have to do a little YAML work, but again, don't be scared of YAML. It's not that bad. Just the, the hardest part is getting the spacing and the indentation correct so it doesn't complain. But if you do it wrong, it will tell you and then you can go back and look and see what's wrong. I don't give it a title because I don't want to waste the space with the title. Uh, I don't want to show anything that's empty. So I set that to false. The scroll bars are enabled. I don't need to see scroll bars. If it's too long for the, for the, uh, the card, I don't care about it. And then I have a max item count of four. You can change this as much as you want. Uh, to fit in the dashboard space, but I find four to be the right amount of space taken up by this card so everything else fits. State color, true. Exact durations, true. Entities, now this is where you specify which entities you want to show up in this home feed card. It's not that everything just shows up automatically. You have to go through and set all of the entities that you are interested in, but I have all my motion sensors, and it's just as simple as taking the entity name, giving it an icon, and giving it a name. So kitchen living motion, you can see here was the icon uh, motion sensor, the, the name kitchen living motion. Uh, and then all of these you go through and add them on. I've got alarm control panels, I've got lamps, uh, doors, but you just fill this out as many entities as you want to fill out this card. Anytime there's uh, an action or something that occurs with one of the entities in this list, it will show up here and you can specify again how many of those you want to show up. All right, so this is the first card that we have in this center column. If we just save it real quick, we'll be able to see how this column lines up. It's the center column on my finished dashboard, but the right column currently because that's I only have two columns. So we'll go back and edit this. We're gonna add another card within this grid. And this next card, of course, is gonna be a grid card because we're gonna have, uh, looks like one, two, three, we're gonna have five different cards within this particular grid card. And these are all going to be custom button cards again. So I'll set the columns to five, non-square. And because we've talked about custom button cards before, I'm just going to copy the configuration in here, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so we've got the we've got the custom button card uh, cu custom button card set up in this particular grid, and there's five of them. These are all my motion sensors, and just like I did in all my other custom button cards. I specify the entity, I specify the icon, give it a name, and then I have a color type card. So that means the card itself is gonna change, not just the icon or something like that. Opacity is 70% when it's not active. Font size is 12 pixels and the color is white. When it turns from an off state to an on state, that card will then turn color red and there will be an alert icon that changes from the motion sensor to alert. And it'll tell me that there's action or motion in that particular zone on one of these sensors. 
And I do that for all of them. It, they're all exactly the same. They do the same thing anytime there's motion showing up on those sensors. So the third card will be another grid card. And this particular grid card will have two columns. And these two columns are going to be, again, custom button cards. So we'll just start with custom button card here. And we'll put in those two, and I'll talk about those two here in just a moment. Okay, so I've added those two cards here, and we have two custom button cards. You'll see those right here. This is my driveway and my porch motion sensors. So when somebody shows up in the frigate in VR and it detects a person there, it's going to show me this, and it'll flash kind of a yellowish color. And the same way with all the other custom button cards. And you're seeing a theme here with the custom button cards. It's always the same way. It's a custom button card with a by, uh, an entity name, an, an icon, in this case, mo motion sensor, and the name, and then the card type, meaning the whole card is going to change colors. Opacity 70%, 14 pixels for the uh, font, and a color of white for the font. When it turns to on, this one's going to turn yellow. It's going to have an opacity of 100%, so it gets bright. And then we're going to have this blink two second ease infinite like we did on one of our other cards. And what that means is it will blink every two seconds, kind of a slow pulsing sound of uh, blink. And then it will do this in the entire time that the card is in an on state. It also changes the, the icon color to black and it also changes the font color to black. So my next row is going to be a, an entity card. And so I'm going to add an entity card here. And this is going to require a little YAML because I'm going to change the type of entity that it's displaying. It would just display a standard entity here, like a sensor or something like that. But I, what I need to do is I need to be able to specify some additional attributes or additional settings on this card. So I'm going to get rid of these right here. This is where that is under the code editor. And we know it's the last entry I've made at the bottom here because this is the last row that we've added to our entire view, our entire dashboard view. So this is an entities card. And I'm going to change the type here. It's going to be a type called attribute because what I need is the attribute of an entity, not the entity uh, state itself. So we're going to give it a type of attribute. And then we're going to specify the entity which is sensor Samba backup. And then we also need to specify the attribute we're interested in. And the attribute in this case is last backup. And what that's going to do is it's going to go get the, the list of attributes and pull the last backup attribute from the sensor. So that gives me the, uh, the indication of when my last successful backup was. And then I'm going to get rid of the name just because I don't need it to be uh, duplicated on here. And I'll just put a couple of uh, quotes there and the name is now gone. And if I really want to get fancy, I will give it a title here. And that title is going to be Samba Backup. Now you could do this either way and looking at it, I think I like it better the other way, but we'll see here. Title Samba Backup. Yeah, so I, I get a title right here, but I don't necessarily like that title there. So let's get rid of the title and let's just leave the name the way it was. I think it was defaulted to Samba Backup. And that way it puts it all on a single line and saves some space. So this is my last successful Samba Backup. Now this next card is kind of interesting. It's called a vertical stack in card and I use it with auto entities. Now it doesn't actually display on the dashboard unless certain criteria are met. It hides it otherwise. This one doesn't actually have a, uh, a UI entry. So I'm just going to do a manual card here and we're going to set up all of this code and I'm going to walk you through the code. So let me cut and paste the code from my production environment and we'll go through and talk about how this is all set up. Okay, I've pasted the code for this card in and you'll notice over here, it doesn't actually display anything. Let me make a quick change down here and see if I can get something to display. There we go. So that's what it looks like when it's actually being displayed. So let me talk about how this works. So we're using two cards kind of nested together here. We're, we're starting with a custom vertical stack in card. Again, install these through HACS. And if you need to know how to install HACS, go watch my video on, on uh, HACS. 
this vertical stacking card actually has a custom auto entities card un within it. So this card by itself would just show whatever you want in the entities, but this determines what shows and when it shows. So the card title is battery devices less than or equal to 10%. So I want to know when my devices get down to a certain level. And in this case, it would be less than or equal to 10%. And I change it just so it would display here, but the type is a custom bar card. So we have card layered and card layered and card. So the auto entities determines when it shows the custom bar card determines what it looks like when it does show. And I have some severity sitting here. And what's interesting is, you know, I have these different severities, but it doesn't actually display anything unless it's less than 10%. So you could conceivably just set the severity one level here and not worry about it. But I do have it in case I want to display it at a higher level at some point. So let's say I go to uh, 50% uh, or 60. I don't even have any. Yeah, here's one, 50%. This one is turning yellow because I have this, or orange because I have this uh, severity level set. So you can specify the severity levels on a custom bar card. And you can do um, device class battery. Title position is left. That means it puts the title over here on the left hand side. And then you can mess around with all of the, the CSS settings or the fine tune how you want it to look. In my case, I want padding of zero, zero pixels on the left. And then the rest of these determine uh, each side of this particular bar, how much padding is on each of those. Saturation is 50%, one column, height is 20 pixels, the width is 60%. And then we have a card style box shadow of 00, zero bar style of, of radius of 20 pixels, indicator style of 20 pixels. Now, this whole custom bar card could be a video by itself. If you're interested in how all of this works, make sure you go look at the custom bar card uh, GitHub page. It, just, it, det it details how all of this works. But this is what it looks like based on these settings right here. The important part about this custom auto entities card is filtering out what you want to see or not see. In this case, I want to include all devices that have an attribute with a device class of battery. And I want to exclude from that Anything that's in a state of NA, a state of off, a state of, of anything greater than or equal to 60. So in this case, uh, I would put it back to 10, but that's how we get this number up here. This is a title. So this can be whatever you want it to say. This is actually how it determines what shows up. I also don't want to know what's in an unknown state or an unavailable state because those, you know, when it boots up, you'll get those states. You may want to look at these and, and leave them uh, as visible to tell you whether or not one of your battery devices is no longer showing with any data. And th that if you take these uh, excludes off of here, you'll know that anytime it's unknown or unavailable, that the battery uh, reading is not actually reading anything. So that may be worth your while to leave those. To me, I do a lot of rebooting, uh, restarting for configuration changes and stuff I'm playing with. And I always see that show up. It eventually will correct itself. I just don't want it on here when I'm not, uh, when I don't need it. So there we go. We just put this back to 10 now, and you'll notice the card is completely gone. So that rewatch this part of the video if you want to see that again, because it really does uh, get a little complicated when you have three different cards kind of stacked in together with each other. My final card in this column is going to be a custom timer bar card. And that has a, a button to click, but again, we've got to do YAML. So let me just cut and paste this real quick while you're watching me do it this time. And we will get this all up and running. And for this, I need to fix all of my spacing. So you come down here and bring this over. Okay. So what I have with this, and you'll see it pop up down here. I've done a lot of stuff with my radio monitoring lately. I've done voltage sensors and temperature sensors for various parts of my radios. I also have one that tells me whether or not the radio is transmitting. And I want to know how long the radio is transmitting for. So I, I use this custom timer bar card and it's using an entity timer radio transmit. And all that is, is a radio transmit sensor that is attached to an ESP32. So anytime the radio transmits, the voltage level drops to a certain level and that indicates it's transmitting. So you basically it's pulled to low. And with that, I can tell whether or not it's transmitting. You'll see that in column three when I show you where I actually do that stuff uh, as a button on the dashboard.
But these uh, icons, MDI, Wi-Fi, uh, use that as a transmitter indicator. Uh, but I have modifications here for this timer bar card. Elapsed 40%, I want it to turn orange, and then it changes the icon to fire, and the bar height stays at 12 picks. And then at 70%, I want it to turn red, and then the MDI fire alert uh, icon will show up. Now this, this entity is a timer that is based off of what I mentioned before, but it's actually a helper. So under configuration, you can add helpers and I can set this timer, which is currently set to two minutes, I believe. When it reaches 40% of two minutes, it turns orange. When it reaches 70% of two minutes, it, then it turns red. It's a visual indicator of how long that radio is actually transmitting. So if we save this now, we should see a completed column two. We have our home feed card, our motion sensor custom button cards, our camera sensor custom button cards, our last state of our Samba backup or last successful run. And then hidden in this little gap right here is our battery monitoring uh, auto entities card. And then of course our final card here is our radio transmit card. And this has that uh, timer bar card. All right, let's try to finish up with the third column. And again, the same way you do this as we did before is you come over here and you add another card. All right, so the first row, we're gonna start with a grid card, of course. It'll be, we'll leave it at three columns for now, not square. And inside that, we're gonna put a picture glance card. So you can start typing picture here and you can see that you have a picture, a bunch of different picture cards. I'll do picture glance. Uh, we'll get rid of the title because it takes up space I don't need. You can specify a, an image that's always there whenever it's not active. I don't use that. And for the camera entity, we're gonna use a driveway person. That's the picture the card will show whenever there's activity. And then we're gonna do a state entity. Whenever this sensor turns on, the card will go from black and white to color, indicating that that's the card or there's activity on the card. And so I will use a binary sensor for this. And then we will take off this right here. And we'll just put in the entity as camera. And that's it for that one. And you can see that we have it right here. And we're going to copy this and duplicate it for the next camera. And in this case, again, the title's gone and that image is gone. Get rid of that. And this camera entity is going to be front porch person. And you'll see it just pop up right here. And then uh, let's see, get rid of these right here. Get rid of this right here. And the entity here will be... Uh, actually, we need the binary sensor. So let's do binary sensor, uh, front porch person motion, front porch person motion. And the entity here will be camera front porch, O and T P R C H. And that's the entity here. And now you have both of your cameras here. That's the first row in this particular card. So let's add another one. And the next one is also going to be a Actually, the next three are going to be the same. They're my Roku cards, and they're not inside of a grid card. So we're just going to use a media player card, custom mini custom mini media player. And the entity required is going to be your device. So in this case, that one. I'm going to give it a name of Living Room Roku. Icon is MDI Television. You'll see that right there. Artwork is going to be Cover. So whatever's displaying or playing on the media player will show up on this little bar right here. And that's all the settings I can do within the visual editor. I have to go into the code editor to add anything else I want. And in this case, uh, we're going to just copy a couple things on over here. We're going to hide a couple things. Right now, I don't need the volume bar and some of these other things. I don't want them on here. So I'm going to click that, add it there. And the idle view is going to be the object, uh, basically nothing here but I'm hiding the volume, hiding the source, and hiding the power state. And this is what it looks like. It kind of shrinks it down and makes it fit a little bit better. We can do the same thing with our next two cards. This is also going to be a media player, custom me uh, mini media player. And I'll fill these two out real quick and I'll come back and we'll just look at them all completed. Okay, so I've pasted this all in and I have the living room, the playroom, and the study Roku. And those will all show up when somebody plays something. You've seen these in my videos in the past where you've seen uh, YouTube or Roku or something showing up on these. It will show the background art of the, of the app that's playing on any of these Rokus. So that's that one. The next row is going to be 
a, let me get out of this, is going to be a couple of custom button cards. And these are going to have an interesting, uh, an interesting setting because I do a little bit of stuff to make things exactly in the right place. So it's going to be a grid card and that grid card is going to have two columns in it, non-square. And I'm going to paste this in like I've done before because it is just going to be uh, easier to explain it that way. So let me grab these custom button cards. Okay, so now we have these two cards and you'll notice here that uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is a custom button card. And these are, this is an example of a custom button card that can, that can get pretty involved in how much configuration you can do on this and customization. So I'm gonna go through one of these, this upstairs one. Again, it's a custom button card. It uses the upstairs HVAC state. Now that's my Nest thermostat. And I get all that information from the Nest integration that I've talked about before. The name is upstairs, which shows up right here. Show units false, show state false. Uh, those are gonna be indicated by the actual card color changing. The icon is a fan off. So if it's not running, it'll automatically default to fan off and the size is 25%. And now we start getting into the styles. If, if this just blows your mind, um, you'll have to dig into the custom button card documentation to really get an idea what this is. In fact, it's so long, I can't even fit it on the full screen here entirely. But the card, text transform capitalized, so I want it capitalized. Uh, opacity 50%, font size is 20 pixels, and the height is 100 pix for the card itself. The name is uh, bolded. 15 picks white, align self start, justify self start, and padding left 30 pixels. If you just want to make this card, just copy the code and do it. And then experiment with it. That's probably the best way to start with some of these is to take an example and then start playing around with some of these values and see what it does. Because it's very hard to explain this to you in a video like this. Again, the custom button card and this particular use of the bu custom button card can be a whole video unto itself. Uh, image cell, justify content middle, align item start, and then we have a grid template that does all of this stuff right here. Uh, and then the grid template columns and the grid template rows. And I had to play with this for quite a while because this in my mind doesn't work. My, my mind doesn't process this right here because it doesn't make sense to me. So I basically took some, uh, I st took a starting point, an example, and then I just went through and I started making changes, read some of the documentation based on what I thought this was doing, and finally got this to be exactly where I want it to be. So these are two displays. And the reason I'm doing it this way rather than using the, net, the uh, thermostat cards is the thermostat cards are huge and they take up a lot of space and they wouldn't actually fit here on my dashboard. So I had to redo this and make this work a little bit better for spacing and get all the information I wanted on here. If this were to turn on, in cooling mode, it would turn the card blue. If it were to turn on heat mode, it would turn the card a reddish color. So right now they're both off, so there's nothing going on. But all of this stuff here, in terms of how this is built, is done with these these uh, this custom YAML. And again, you're just really going to have to dig into this and look at it and see what it does and apply it and experiment if you want to build this card. The code is gonna be in GitHub as it already is for part one. This same code is in there. Look through it. And if you have a question about it, I'll do my best to answer it. Um, but it took me a while to put these cards together. But it just shows you the power of what you can do with customization to build the dashboards. And I've done this twice, of course. So you have both of these cards side by side on that grid. Okay, so let's do another card. And I apologize that I really didn't dig into this in detail. That, again, this can be an entire video all by itself, just building something like this with an entity card. So let's go back to visual editor and we're gonna add another, another row here. Again, this is gonna be a grid card. This grid card is going to have three items in it, non-square. And the first card in this is going to be an entity card, not entities, but entity, a single entity. And this entity is gonna be uh, let's see, current day, if I can get this. Yep, flume sensor, current day. And the, the name is optional. I'm gonna call it day water. That's the water usage for the day. Icon is optional. So I'm gonna change this to has fountain. Oh, let's find fountain here. Uh, MDI fountain, let's go with that. And everything else is going to be 
exactly the same, uh, except for gallon, I'll put this gallon. So now you see I have a card that tells me how much water I've used today, and today my sprinklers ran, so that's why you see that at a pretty high number. The next card in this row is going to be a custom button card, and you see me do this many, many times, so let me just put the code down there for you. And it's gonna be a custom button card that shows the current, it shows the current water running. The difference in this one is that it does that blink infinite ease and it changes it to green. So when the water's running, you'll see this kind of pulsating every two seconds thing going on. Anytime the value gets above 0.5. And finally, our last one is another custom button card. So we'll add that here, custom button card. I use a lot of custom button cards because they're just so powerful. They do a lot of stuff. And so I will copy the code for this one and paste it in here for you. And this one is my washing machine, which also will flash or turn blue whenever it's running and stay in this state when it's not running. That is this row and that's row six of seven. My final one is going to be a seventh row. Again, a grid card. We always start with a grid card. My final row contains all custom button cards. So let me go ahead and paste that in here. And by the way, when I do these bulk paste, I'll just show you this time. I go to the very bottom here because I know that's where I just added this row. I'll do cards and then I will go into my, when I'm pasting this, when you're building it like this, you wouldn't actually do pasting unless you're copying from another column. But copying code, you just take the code in the visual, in the code editor and you just paste it in. I'm grabbing that code now. We'll just paste it in here in the right spot. And that moved it down for some reason. Let me see what happened here. Radio power supply. I don't think I specified the right number of columns in this one. Yep, so I need to go to four columns on here. So this is a four column. Okay, so I've pasted it in. We can look at it this way now. Each one of these things, uh, is a custom button card as you're used to seeing. Uh, this one is a radio power supply voltage. And this one is radio power supply uh, temperature. So all we're doing here is we're 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 changing the values based on uh, what the value of the entity would be. So in this case, it's a volt uh, power supply volts calculation of 14.5 or greater, it will turn it red. Uh, this one is temperature greater than 140 goes red. Uh, this one here, if the temperature is greater than 120, it goes red. And this one, anytime it's on, which you see it's on now, the radio is transmitting uh, based on this entity right here, the binary sensor, it will turn yellow or orange-ish with an opacity of 100%. So let's save that and let's get uh, me out of the way here. And finally, let's go up here and click the UI exit. And now what you have is this complete uh, left to right three column dashboard that uh, works on your, it fits on my Galaxy tab. And I use this on a daily basis. It gives me an overview of what's going on with some history, uh, who's watching the television, if I need to do something about that with the kids uh, and all the stuff that we built here. So if you have any questions about the dashboard, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about these cards that I built, let me know. Again, the code is gonna be on GitHub. Uh, down in the comments, put your comments there. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. I would appreciate it so much. It helps that algorithm go. If you're not a member of the channel, I would appreciate that too. It helps to support what I do right here and all of that jazz. And we will see you on the next video.